A very good afternoon to uh, all second jury members and chairperson and organizing committee. Today, uh, I'm going to present a poster on medical negligence. First, we come to introduction. Medical negligence defined as absence of reasonable care and skill or willful negligence of a medical practitioner in the treatment of a patient which causes bodily injury or death of a patient. There are basically four elements of the negligence. Number one is duty, direction, that causation, and fourth one is damage. There are basically four types of negligence we have. Number one, civil negligence, criminal negligence, number three, corporate negligence, and contributory negligence. The liability for civil negligence arises in omission and commission. Wrong medicine, wrong dose, incomplete record, safety compromise, hospital infection, failure to attain time, in inadequate communication. The liability for criminal negligence arises in removal of the healthy eye instead of the disease and uh, healthy past, wrongly amputation, operation on wrong individual, not taking adequate safety measures, leaving instrument beside the abdomen. That means rest it's a locator. In fact, it speaks for itself. Corporate negligence, it is a failure of those persons who are responsible for providing the accommodation, facilities, and treatment to follow the established standard of the conduct. Now, we have the laws in medical profession. Doctors have been liable under laws such as Civil Procedure Code, Indian, uh, Indian Penal Code, Law of Contractors, Law of Torts, and other specific legislation. Under Section 304A of Indian Penal Code, the doctor who commits criminal liability is punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend up to two years or with a fine or both. Civil liability arises in cases of medical services rendered on payment of fee under Section 73 and 74 of Indian Contract Act 1986. Under the law of tort, a wrong that is independent of civil liability is applicable to doctors on the ground of professional misconduct. Now, uh, Supreme, uh, there are some Supreme Court directions regarding the medical reasons. Statutory rules or executive instructions incorporating certain guidelines need to be framed and issued by the government of India or state governments in cons consultation with the Medical Council of India. So long as it is not done, we propose to lay down certain guidelines for the future, which should govern the prosecution of doctors or offenses of <coughs> which criminal rashness or criminal negligence is an ingredient. A private complaint may not be entertained unless the complainant has produced prima facie evidence before the court in form of a credible opinion given by another competent doctor to support the charge of rashness or negligence on the part of the accused doctor. The investigating officer should, before proceeding against the doctor accused of rash or negligent act or omission, obtain an independent and competent medical opinion, preferably from a doctor in government service qualified in that branch of medical practice who can normally be expected to give an impartial and unbiased opinion, applying Bolam's test to the facts collected in the investigation. A doctor accused of rashness or negligence may not be arrested in a routine manner, simply because a charge has been leveled against him, unless his arrest is necessary for further furthering the investigation or for collecting evidence, or unless the investigation officer feels satisfied that the doctor procedure against would not make himself available to face the prosecution unless arrested. The arrest may be withheld. Negligence is the breach of a duty exercised by omission to do something which is a reasonable man guided by those considerations which ordinarily regulate the conduct of human affairs. Would you all doing something which a prudent and reasonable man would not do? Negligence is an essential ingredient of the offense. The negligence to be established by the prosecution must be culpable or gross and not the negligence merely based upon an error of judgment. The medical professional is expected to bring a reasonable degree of skill and knowledge and must exercise a reasonable degree of care. Neither the very highest nor a very low degree of care or competence just in the light of particular circumstances of each case is what the law requires. A medical practitioner would be liable only when his conduct fell below that of the standards of a reasonable competence practitioner in his field. In the realm of diagnosis and treatment, there is a scope of genuine difference of opinion and one professional doctor is clearly not negligent merely because his conclusion differs from that of other professional doctors. The medical professional is often called upon to adopt a procedure which involves higher element of risk, but which he honestly believes as providing greater chances of success for the patient rather than a procedure involving lesser risk 
but higher chances of failure. Just because a professional looking to the gravity of illness has taken higher element of risk to redeem the patient out of his or her suffering, which did not yield the desired result, may not amount to the negligence. Negligence cannot be attributed to a doctor so long as he performs his duties with reasonable skill and competence, merely because the doctor chooses one course of action in preference to the other one available. He would not be liable if the course of action chosen by him was acceptable, acceptable to the medical profession. It would not be conducive to uh, if efficiency of the medical profession if no doctor could administer medicine without a halter around his neck. It is our bounded duty, obligation of the civil society to ensure that the medical professionals are not unnecessarily harassed on, or humiliated so that they can perform their professional duties without fear and apprehension. The medical practitioners at times also have to be saved from such a class of complainants who use criminal forces as a tool for pressurizing the medical professional hospitals, particularly private hospitals or clinics, for extracting uncalled for compensation. Such malicious proceedings deserve to be discarded against the medical practitioners. The medical professionals are entitled to get protection so long as they perform their duties with reasonable skill and competence and in the interest of the patients. The interest and welfare of the patients have to be paramount for medical professionals. Thank you.